Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I want to go back over the X mods exactly on what is supposed to be done to convert them from the original Radio Shack status to their current new Hobby Grade status. Or at least up to status with uh, the Kyosho Mini Z and some of the other ones that are out there just as quick. So, obviously, um, you gotta take out an awful lot of the parts inside in relation to the old stuff. I mean, you can't have the old server in there no more. You can't have any of the old electronics in there anymore. And I did leave in that metal heat sink there at the bottom only to keep things level for the servo and everything else. It really doesn't serve any other purpose than that. You can use probably double-sided tape to, to really level it out. You don't have to have that metal piece in there. You could probably take it out and uh, save yourself some space. Um, it's obviously recognizable, but I think I see and remember why he's asking what he's asking. There's not a lot of space in there. And it's like, well, do I need all that extra stuff? Well, no, you don't. You can actually go without all that extra stuff. Um, I just left off of there just to save me some time from unscrewing everything. Removing this battery compartment. I mean, obviously they're not needed. And when I position the battery on there, it's not gonna be so, um, I mean, clearly it's got, a, you need a place to put your battery, so. Not the best place. It's not the best place because I say these walls really minimize how much stuff you can put inside there and keep in there. Pretty simple to get those off. Um, after that, you're gonna wanna pretty much cut this piece, I think. Um, right here. I say that because you, you, you actually want to leave. I wonder if I can zoom into that. This piece right here that screws into this yellow bracket, just underneath that, you want to keep that piece of plastic as a, a good spacer to keep it the equal amount of distance it needs to put the motor in the proper position. If it pulls it down too much, it will actually lift this end off of that, that gear inside. And then you won't be able to uh, drive on it very well. It's gonna, it's gonna um, skip threads and even strip the threads. So I recommend just cutting this piece off right here. So you still keep that space. As for the front, I think, yeah, you can just get rid of all of it. You can literally just cut it right there and unscrew it from the front and leave it out. The servo is only actually standing up on the inside. I just cut one of the arms and I used the screw that came in the package and stuck it in the opposite end 
to use that. You should be looking right here. That screw right there. And that's like, I just cut this servo arm short that came in the bag. And the screw that's going through the servo arm into the one hole came out of the bag as well. I didn't have to cut it short. It's a perfect fit. It doesn't it doesn't interfere with the uh differential gear at all. These are the most significant parts that everybody's so confused about. St putting the servo in with a servo arm from inside the package, just clip it with some scissors, using a screw from inside the package and screw it into the back and it literally lays down in there. I've just got some double sided tape in there holding it in. That's literally it. That's that's it for the servo. Uh, this this here that you see with my uh, electrical tape, I just cut the servo, the length of the servo wire. I just cut it, and cut it again, shortened it and stripped it and reconnected the same colors together. It can be soldered and it can be done better. The motor can be swapped with the Mini Z brushless motor if you get the brushless ESC that goes with it or a similar one. Um, I'm soon to be getting this exact same motor soon. Now here on screen you'll see that uh, this is the motor and I'm, I expect it to have some seriously great expectations for it, for its size. Um, and I mean, my application's not going to be that, not, not extreme. I'm not going to go above and beyond. But if I do decide to use this size motor in, in something, say, for instance, the new Bright Corvette that can use the same size motor, and actually several applications that New Bright has, you can absolutely use that exact same um, Mini Z brushless motor because it fits in there perfectly. You don't have to do any modifications. You just have to get a pinion. And getting a pinion uh, might be a little bit more trickier to do, but they're out there. You can get one. After that, you can put that motor in anything. Just gotta get that ESC to match. I'll get that soon, shortly, and have you guys uh, look at the comments below, or not the comments, but the video description below and see where you can get that from. Other than that, uh, that should be st pretty straightforward. Um, as for the specific product details, um, again, I use the 30 amp brushed ESC. You might find various versions of this. There's a, a red version and there's this green version that's got this um, obvious capacitor on the bottom that um, it's supposed to do the same job uh, that, um, that these guys do here but on hardcore applications and built in so you don't have you don't technically have to have these on the motor I mean it's it this is this is set up so that way you could literally put this into a toy grade and you don't have to worry about that because it's compensated here for you which is very very nice a lot of a lot of a lot of features for that um other than that it's not programmable it's 30 amps and so it should be able to handle most applications of this motor size i wouldn't i wouldn't go above this motor size let's see actually i would to be real specific to be honest these 30 amps can literally only handle this D type uh, 130 size motor. And as a matter of fact, the highest you can handle is the long version, the 180. They're both Ds, they both fit in the same size slot, 
The only difference is you get a little lot more torque to handle heavier cars and whatnot. Okay, uh, this specific one goes at 23,000 RPMs at 7.4. So that's pretty, that's pretty good. Considering, uh, gosh, these X mods, oh, I can't see the, uh, it says on the X mod motor, how many K, I think it was 26 K for stage one and then, um, 30 K for the stage two. So, I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's got a ton of torque and can handle larger applications and probably give you better ac acceleration in some applications and, and maybe in the cor the Corvette, I'm not sure. This focus is really picky. I mean, you got to isolate. You got to isolate. I wrote it on there. Same exact thing. This is the largest size motor you can put in here. If you get a 260 size motor like this one, it's eventually going to burn out your ESC. It will not handle this motor at all. I know for a fact, and I've done it. This is the largest size motor it, it can take. Don't even bother with anything else. It can take your experimental, which is nice, but it cannot take these larger size motors. There's just too much amps going through. I don't get it, I don't know why. Um, it, it actually shorts out the FET microchips on top of the um, the ESC itself. I mean, I've actually had a, a tough time trying to s swap those out. Here you can see I had I had to cut this plastic down the middle and I, I had literally had to solder on brand new FETs onto this. You can probably tell it was that one, not the other ones, but there was specifically this one. This is the other version. It claims 30 amps. But uh, this FET can't handle it, and it does not have, and it does not have the built-in capacitor like the green one does. The green one, I believe, is a newer version. So I, I would go for that instead. Um, you can buy them in single pieces. I'd recommend buying them in two pieces. Save yourself the, the, the cost. It's cheaper that way. And you never know. And then, of course, as for the servo, I'm using these, uh, uh, gosh. It says Smraza, but, uh, on Amazon, all you really want to look up is Microserver 9G S51. And odds are you'll, you'll find several versions of this in black and in blue. Uh, there's really no difference between the two other than the types of casings that are on them. Some might say Metal Gear Servo. I don't know about all that. I have no idea about it. You have to pay, pay a little more for that. I buy these in boxes of 10. No less because it's so much more cheaper that way and sometimes these break. Um, so again, I, all I did was um, you can use a single arm. You don't have to cut anything too much. Just, uh, I think it was uh, leave the third dot or the two dots you either leave two dots on there you leave three dots on there when you cut it it's probably two dots and then put the screw into the second one but leave the third one just in case you cut too short um try putting the screw in the third one and it's the smaller screw it's that smaller screw which is supposed to go into the horn when you tighten it in but if you get the package of 10, you can borrow a screw or you can find another screw in if, if you have more toys and then uh, find a screw in another toy you might have. And that's where, that's how I did that. The radio set is of course the FS GT2B radio um, transmitter. That you can buy on Amazon that comes with this little guy. Um, FSGR3E, three channel receiver. 
does a great job. The range is okay. It's not too bad. Um, I chose it specifically because you can almost get this to fit in the car alone. Almost. Almost. But I mean, even then still, you got, you got stuff you got to connect to it. You got all that stuff you got to connect to it. So it's either got to go in this way. I think I had it go in this way in mine. But even then still, it's really tricky to get it in like that. I mean, you got all those wire connections you got to worry about. You could probably get away with... Um, <laughs> taking all of those out and individually wiring it in there and, and then like slightly bending it either upward or downward to get them all through I mean you're only working with so much space if it's too tall you won't be able to get the uh, the top on and it will cause it to crush uh, because it's so packed it'll cause it to crush and bend and the shaft that go that goes down the middle is actually going to um, it's going to bind, and it's going to you're going to have extra friction that you don't need, and it's going to be going way slower than it could be going. So you need to be careful and mindful of that as well. The servo, I obviously cut off, not very well, but I cut off the screw tabs that you would normally use to. Uh, to get it down into something or screw it down into something mount it so that's why I chose all these items the batteries of course once again can easily be velcroed and mounted to the car and keep it off the ground Very simple, very easy. Takes a little time, but it brings you up to date. Right now, I'm, <laughs> I thought I showed it in the last video. I mean, squeezing some of this stuff, this stuff in there is pretty comp complex, but once you get everything situated uh, and reduce your wires if you can, you'll be left with quite a bit of space you'll get it all to fit if you want you can actually take the case off to the receiver I mean uh, yeah to the receiver uh, so you can get just a little bit more space but that's what you're looking at there may be smaller out there but as far as I know this was pretty affordable for its size So if you have any more questions about this or any other cars, let me know. Tell your friends, subscribe, and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can with them. And for the next episode, I'm sure I'm going to have this uh, another Rostar toy that I've got at a junkyard, junkyard, at a garage sale that I'd like to convert and see how it performs against that Ferrari. See you guys next time.